I think you're too afraid to write bad code. I mean, here's the thing. Everyone knows that clean code is what you want at the end of your project, but that doesn't mean that you need it right now. You might be throwing away a ton of effort cleaning up something that doesn't even see its way into the final version of your feature, all because you were too afraid that it was too ugly. Let me show you how. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Uh, we're gonna start calling this like Tuesday Talks. I think we talk about the concept of clean code too much. So we have this idea in our head of what we kind of want the code to look like. Beginners will spend a long time on this step and they'll think a lot about all of these little changes that they could be making that will maybe make the code five, 10% better. And I think that we need to stop doing this. Do you need to really hardline define what your code structure is gonna be? And you need to commit to this and commit to it and commit to it and commit to it as hard as you can until your code gets to the point that it is annoying you. And it is incredibly difficult for you to accomplish what you need to get done to the point where you wanna just smash your screen. This is the point where I want you to think about cleaning up your code and restructuring your code. And I want to show you an example of this using the dynamic overlay that we built on stream over the last few weeks. So let's take a look at what we were building. We have this title, we have this header section that is, you know, made up in an icon, a left text, a right text, and we have this timer. Let's show you a little bit about what this looks like. So here's how we started. Okay, we start with something that's very simple, where we have this concept of whether or not we want to display the overlay. You saw it slide in. Now we add in our title. We get to our header and we're like, oh man, there's a lot of stuff here related to the header. We've just added three whole lines of code. Maybe it's time that we start cleaning things up. Let's just move this down into its own function. And while we're there, I mean, we might as well move the title down too. And now we're like, oh, well, you know, why are we passing in all of the data? Okay, we could just pass in the title. So we might as well do the same thing down here to our header since we made this realization. We're cleaning up our code so much. Look at how much progress we're making. You know, it, it looks pretty good until we, we really zoom in on this. And we're like, wow, three whole parameters. So the important thing is now we're going to move this up into a nice little interface that we've got going on. And that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. But now it's time to add our timer. Why isn't it starting at 10 minutes, chat? I told it to start at 10 minutes. Well, the problem is that we started the timer just straight off the bat. Okay, great. That's fine. Our timer is counting down before it's shown on the screen. So again, we just update our set timer method. Things are looking pretty good. Let's try and update our timer while we have a timer running. And you can see we get this weird bug. It's all glitchy. Why is it all glitchy? We've got two timers running. Now we have this structure that we're committed to and we just keep having these bugs just pop up. Because of our change that we made, unfortunately, no timer starting. No timer starting up at all. We've got blank. Well, now the problem is that we're actually trying to figure out when we update display, we need to start the timer as well. We're gonna ask ourselves why we have two timers again when we update our code. Well, because now that we start a timer up here, we got to kind of worry about that logic when the display changes as well. So that's kind of gross. And now we've got this like duplicate logic in these two spots and we could try and pull this out into a function, but you know, we've got a new requirement coming in. So now we've got to add new logic in. Wait a minute, what is this? Do we even need this? Does this line even make sense contextually here? We've got back to back if this dot timers and this doesn't really make sense to us. Why are we going to clear a timer just to start a timer? Can we even have a timer already here? Can a timer be started? I don't know. It's hard to say and our code's getting kind of long and we're sad. It's hard for us to tell. Is this line necessary? Are we going to break something by removing it? Who's to say? We just don't know. It's time for us to refactor. We're getting confused by our own code. We really, really strip down this component. And now our dynamic overlay component becomes an orchestrator that only cares about doing this one little thing. And that one thing is checking if we've changed whether or not to be displaying our overlay. And if so, we omit that out. We have our timer component. Oh, the timer component. That's so complicated and difficult to reason about, and it creates bug after bug for us. What does it look like? Now, it's pretty short. 
and it's pretty easy to reason about. Nice, simple, and we've wasted all of our time that we spent refactoring this. We took time and thought about ways to clean up our code too soon. This was all wasted effort. None of this made its way into the final code base because these things didn't matter. It's a thing that doesn't get talked about verbosely a lot that if it is not causing you problems for writing the code, it is probably not something that needs to get cleaned up. So should we have left everything in the init until we had a problem? I'm glad you asked because that is exactly what I did. When we were writing this live on stream, this is what our init looked like. And it was while we were doing the pre-roll video and we had this difficult timer logic that kept running into a third set of bug after bug after bug that we decided it's time. So in practice, you saw me write a ton of ugly code on stream. I even commented on it multiple times. Let your code be ugly. Let your code be uglier than you think that it should be. And then over time, you will learn this line. This is the visual that I really wanted everyone to take away. You've got to get to this point with your code. It is so hard for you to make changes that you are like throwing your head against the wall.